the seamstress. We start out with our silks, our colors. This is the powdered dye that comes in the jar. We have to take it out of here and mix it in the right proportions in order to get the right color combinations to come out. So it's mixed up with water, put into a jar like this. Then from there, it goes into the pan on our fancy hot plate. Uh, we hope this hot plate never dies because I'm not sure they still make them anymore. But this is the way we heat our dye. The dye has to be hot before you can put the soaks in it. Because if you put the soak in before it's hot, when you rinse it in the cold water, you will rinse your color right out. Or a lot of it, not all of it. I'll take one of these. This is a Northern Lights silk. I've already got the yellow portion done on this. You dip the center down inside like this. You dip it part way into the yellow and that gives you your orange. Then you pull it back up a little bit, hold it in there to get your darker red colors. When you're all done holding it in, it takes about three minutes to get an actual good coloring of your different colors. But you turn your cold water on and you rinse it over a pan in the sink. And the reason you use the pan is because you'll see little flakes that'll come off especially in the red and the pink, and you need to keep rinsing until they stop coming off. They're kind of like little dander flakes, only they're almost a black in the red. If those are still on the soap when the soap dries, you have a black spot on there, and then that soap is no good. It also helps by rinsing them over a pan. When I squeeze this and the, the color doesn't come out anymore, then I know that I've rinsed it enough that the color is set in, and when I hit, hit it with the iron, this, you can do anything you want with this silk except wash it in cold water, and the color will not come off. You can take your hands, run it over it, you can use it for any trick, anything, and your color will stay on the silk and not on your hands. Now we get these done. This is part of an extra large dye lot that we're working on here today. All, all the silks I can handle by myself, except for when we start doing what we call a mammoth silk. This silk here is six foot by six foot square, and it does take someone else to help hold it, because I gotta keep this end out of the red while I'm dyeing it. Then once this end is dyed red, I have to be able to keep the other end out of the blue. So it takes two hands on this one every time we do these mammoth silks to make sure that one color doesn't get accidentally dropped in the other one or get mixed in. Dye the mammoth silk, and I'm going to give the boss a pair of gloves because he's not used to getting his hands dirty, so we want to make sure he stays nice and clean. Actually, I do that because the mammoth soaks, once you get any of this dye on your hands or your clothes, it will not come out, so I'm trying to be extra nice. Make sure he doesn't get any on his clothes. I'm ready for surgery. Here's hands. All right. Here you go, Greg. You get to hold that white end. Okay. Hold that right up, just like that. Okay. You gotta keep this part too. Okay. Can't let any of that drop down into that dye. Oh, okay. Now I gotta be careful when I put this in, because if you drop it in too hard, when you splash, one little splash comes up on any of this yellow here. This whole silk is basically ruined. He sells it at his auction in March, which Greg doesn't like to do because these silks are very, very expensive. Very. So we try to be very careful and not get a lot of splashes up on it. Also, when you're rinsing them, you have to be careful the same way because if this silk gets splashed from the water, the water will also take the color and move it up. You can see where I dip this in here, how it's climbing up where it's wet. I actually want that to do that to come up a little bit. That ensures that there are no white spots on this silk when it's done. And it also, to about down in here where the yellow stopped, this when it's pressed will be orange. So you'll go from a beautiful red to an orange into your yellow. So that's why we dip it in part way and then pull it back out. Now when we get ready to rinse this silk, like I was saying, you turn the water on very low 
because you don't want any splashing on this so this thing splashes up then basically you've thrown a lot of money down the drain. You, you got to rinse this make sure you get as much of the dye back out of it as possible why do you put it in and then rinse it out because if you don't rinse it real good and squeeze a lot of the loose dye back out of it when the magician goes to use it, this soap will color it will come off on his hands. And you want to make sure that color is not going to come off on the magician's hands. So when he grabs his white soap, then he ends up with a pink or a red soap, depending on how much color has come off. The red takes quite a bit to rinse it. It'll actually, I'll stand here and rinse this for about 10 minutes to make sure I get it all out because it does have little black specks. And if any one of those are left on the silk, then I'll have a black spot on it. But at this point, I'll squeeze some of that out, turn the water off, wipe my hand to ensure that I don't have any red dye on it, and I'll take this white part that Greg's holding, put it over my shoulder so I don't get it in the other colors, and then I can turn him loose and he can go do something else, and I'll continue to rinse his silk. This silk is going to Dale Solway in California. Okay, <laughs> it's actually handmade for Dale Solway's ass. So.